Normally, we see her here on the front lines of wildfire. It's the largest fire we have currently really in Washington. But it's no secret. Washington Public Lands Commissioner Hillary Franz may run for governor. I have been asked by many people to consider running for governor. The day following our interview just a few weeks ago, newspaper headlines suggested the same. Her decision hinges on the current governor's plans, who's making a run for the highest office. We can no longer allow a white nationalist to be in the White House. While Washington Democrats wait in the wings. And Hillary Franz is back joining me now. Thank you so much for coming back to talk with us a little bit more. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, first of all, I'll just ask, how do you think Governor Jay Inslee did last night? You know, I was had a really busy day. We've got a fire on the landscape over in Natchez, and I got there to the tail end. So I got to see his um, comments on climate change, which we know is one of the number one issues that he is raising, and it's certainly a number one issue for our state and for our nation. I thought he was very strong. Um, I think raising the flag on this issue, as you know, our agency is on the front lines of climate change every single day, from forest fires to forest dying to drought and to obviously issues around our ocean acidification and sea level rise too. So we're watching him deploy some fire shelters right there in case people were wondering what that video was. You guys have obviously worked very closely. I know he respects that the work that you do in your role. Uh, I know that you're waiting on what he decides with his path forward and whether he's going to seek a third term. Do you have any indication of how much time he's going to give you? Um, right now, no. I mean, right now we know that he has um, working very hard to be able to put a strong foot forward in this presidential race. We have a lot of candidates in that race. I'm, to be frank, I'm right now in the height of our fire season is about to start. August is one of our most significant times, so my focus has been on making sure this state is prepared, making sure our firefighters are protected and our communities are safe. The last time you were here off camera, we had really good discussions about, you know, big thinking policy decisions and the direction of Washington state. When you ran for public lands commissioner, we were just discussing this. Uh, all of your support came from the Puget Sound. How has that changed in the past couple of years? Because we, we generally tend to have a divided state when it comes to politics, but you've been all over the place. Have you seen that support for you as an elected official grow? I have. I mean, I think the first thing, we right now sit not only at the national level, but the state level in a huge division. We have an urban-rural divide. We have a Republican-Democrat divide. And my big belief is as long as we're in the place of division, we will not get progress. We actually have more that we can agree on and deliver, but we have to actually go and work together. And so one of the first things I did actually even before I was in office is I drove five hours to Tenasket and met with Representative Joel Kretz, who um, his community suffered the 2014 and 2015 fires, devastating for their community. And I spent a whole day where he showed me what that devastation looked like. And he also showed me how forest health and making our forest more resilient can actually ensure the long-term health of that forest and the protection of communities. Um, in addition to that, just by showing up, helping listen, learning, understanding, we've now been able to go f really fast in the issue of being better at firefighting and also putting forward a forest health plan that will help protect our communities. Another example is Okanagan had another flood that was the worst flood since 1973. And a state of emergency was declared in that community. And we sent 300 firefighters that weren't yet in needing to do firefighting to fill sandbags and protect those communities. So what I found is that if we actually go out into these communities and actually listen and understand what their greatest struggles are, get out of the King County area, right? These are the places that are growing our trees. They're creating clean water. They're ensuring we have food, right? Um, they're build, creating the build, uh, building supply that we need to build our cities. Mm. If we go out into those communities and actually listen and help understand what their biggest challenges are and what their biggest opportunities, and then say, how can we work together for your success? We actually can bridge this divide. Is that why you think that people have asked you to consider running for governor, because of that perspective that you bring? I do. I mean, that's exactly. I mean, the first thing is I've traveled to almost every part of this state, and I have been in challenging situations like fire and floods, but I've also been in situations of helping listen to figuring out how we can actually grow their economies. Many of our communities don't have the luxury of the cranes. You know, Seattle's had three years now of the most amount of cranes 
in the world that brings huge economic opportunity. It's certainly also bringing challenges in the context of affordable housing. But many communities have generations where they have not had economic opportunity in community. And I believe we can actually turn that around by investing in those communities. And in doing so, we will actually create the longer term health for the entire state of Washington, environmentally, socially, and economically. There's no shortage of areas where we need to invest in our state. I think we know that we have a terrible homelessness problem, terrible mental health program problem. The list goes on and on. If you were to choose three budget priorities, if you were to take an executive role, oh, where would you think that money should go first in our state? I'm going to say first of all, we need to first think across the board, right, in not spending money in the mode of reaction. We need to be investing proactively in actually thinking of solutions. I think about that in the context of wildfires, I told you. We spend $153 million on the back end, mm -hmm. when if we were investing in forest health and investing in wildfire suppression, we can actually help longer term reduce the cost and actually increase economic opportunity. I would say we could do the same thing in the context of mental health. We're 46th in the nation in mental health. We need to be investing up front in how do we create stable communities and provide those resources before they're in a state of crisis. Obviously, jobs and economic opportunity. Mm -hmm. We know some are doing really, really well in parts of our King County, Central Puget Sound region and outside, but there are many parts of our state where we still see constant unemployment and high levels of unemployment and that perpetuates this context of poverty and addiction and mental health that we then are paying for afterwards and then I'll always say the context of housing how can we expect anybody be able to provide for their family mm -hmm. how and also create a job uh, keep a job and also be able to provide more value in the longer term for our community if we don't have roof over their heads well, I know these are, these are things that you'll be advocating for, regardless of what position you decide to go forward with in your elected career. Hillary Franz, thank you so much for coming back and joining us. Thank you.